everybody. Back. Look what we got today. Holy shit. That's right. Look at it. Aero Videos limited edition box set release of Reanimator. It's backwards. I know. I know. We're here to do a review. We can't fuck around like we usually do. So everybody just, you know, be on your best behavior. Arrow Video might watch this. Wow, the color, the lighting is weird. I'm, I'm orange. It's like when you hold something up, it changes like... Look how it changes the fucking picture color. No fucking around! Concentrate, guys. Come on. So yeah, uh... Arrow Video sent me this to review. I've been, I've been a fucking Reanimator fan since it first came out on home video. Um, in a lot of ways, it got me into fucking horror big time, or more into horror, um, by just randomly finding it at a video store, mom and pop, in my little hometown. So uh, I have quite an extensive reanimator collection. Um, I'm not going to show it to you now. Maybe someday. But I'm a huge reanimator fan. And um, wow. Beautiful. I got to stop sniffing this because there are chemicals. And I might be getting a little fucking higher than I was before. So... Let's get into it. I'm just going to I'm going to list off the guts of this. What's inside these discs? Um just so, you know, we have that all on the table, then we'll go into the packaging and then my opinions at the end. If I can control myself, the opinions will be at the end. It never works that way. I always I always just start fucking running off. So, um, in case you didn't know, this is two Blu-rays, limited edition box set. All of the Blu-rays have been uh, uh, 4K restored HD, and uh, it contains uh, the unrated version on one disc, and the integral version on the second disc. On the first disc is the unrated version. Now, um, there was, when it was first released, there was a, uh, there was a, a TV and an R-rated version of it, and then there was just the unrated home video release. I gotta stop moving or something, it's changing my light to orange. Is it not? I don't know what to do. Anyway, so, R-rated, uh, TV version, unrated. It was at the home video. But they, like, Vestron released the R-rated, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was an R-rated VHS and an uh, unrated VHS. I've never seen the, the, the cut ones, ever. <laughs> I don't, I mean, like, it was never intentional. It just worked out that way. Like I was never, I was never in a position to fucking watch them for some reason. I don't remember anyone ever playing it on TV. And um, you know, like if I have the choice at a video store, which I don't remember making, but if I had the choice, <laughs> clearly I'm going unrated. But uh, yeah, so I never, I've never seen those, those versions. But uh, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going off. Because this doesn't ha this has the integral version. We'll get to that later. Let's just hit disc one, the unrated version. That's the version that most people have seen. So uh, unrated version, 86 minutes, as it always was, should be. Um, this the the unrated version has mono, stereo, and 5.1 DTS HD audio all of those to choose from the original mono i believe it was originally in mono um there's an isolated score 
the soundtrack on it. There's uh, new commentary from Stuart Gordon and uh, some actors from the fucking musical for some reason. Um, <laughs> whoops, I'm seeing how I just got, I just gave an opinion. Um, there's old commentary from uh, Stuart Gordon. There's an, also another commentary track with uh, Brian Usna, Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton, Bruce Abbott, and Robert Sampson. All of those people on one commentary. That one's funny. That's like that's kind of that's the kind of the good one. Um, that's an opinion. I shouldn't be saying it. See, I can't. I can't stop myself. I'm all worked up. Oh my god. Dude, I was so excited when I got this in the mail. I'm just like, I was like a kid on Christmas morning. Like, I was just like, oh, they sent it to me. Because they don't always send me everything. If it's like, if they think it's too good for me, in my app, Monster Movie App at monstermovieapp.com, um, if they think it's too good for me, they won't send it. I would think that they just don't send out, you know, some of their bigger releases, um, stuff like that. So, um, it might not just be me. I don't know. Sometimes, but like, I was like, please, please, Satan. If I could just ask one more favor, please, please let Arrow send me the Reanimator limited edition two disc box set to review. Cause, uh, I gotta stop sniffing it because I'm, you know, like I'm gonna rub it on my genitals. I've been rubbing it on my genitals every night since I got it. Where were we? Disc one, unrated version. All the special features on that disc. We left off with the commentary track. It also has uh, the feature length documentary. It's like an uh, hour and eight minutes, I wanna say. Uh, Reanimator Resurrectus. Um, awesome, awesome, uh, behind the scenes making of, it's got interviews with the cast and crew. Um, then we get into fucking interviews, interviews with Stuart Gordon and Brian Usna, uh, interview with Dennis Pauly, I believe is how you pronounce his name, Pauly, Dennis pa Pauly, it's Dennis Pauly, uh, interview with composer Richard Band, who is a cool dude. I met him one time, got his autograph on my From Beyond vinyl soundtrack, which I love to death. Um, really cool guy. And he was charging like, he charged like five bucks to sign. Like, just, just the coolest dude ever. Everybody else was charging 25 or 30, and he's like, yeah, five bucks. He's practically giving them away. Uh... So, interview with composer Richard Band. The soundtrack on this is fucking amazing. Richard Band's music, like, is great. Some might say wasted on, on a lot of his brother's projects. He definitely elevates whatever he touches. Um, so, uh, on top of that interview with Richard Band, there's music discussion with uh, Richard Band as well, a separate special feature. There's an interview with... Uh, Former Fangoria editor, Tony Timpone. I don't think he's the guy that owes me fucking money, but Fangoria owes me fucking money. Don't get me started. Okay, so then there's uh, Barbara Crampton in conversation. The uh, It's a, a, a sit-down interview with her and journalist Alan Jones um, discussing like her whole career. I'm I'm obviously reading from something, okay? If you haven't, you know, if you can't tell. I'm not trying to hide it. I don't have, I should have cue cards like back here behind the camera. I should have cue cards behind the camera. But I'd still be doing this. You'd be able to tell. Whatever, I mean, how, yeah, I'm not going to fucking memorize all this shit. What am I, an actor? Um... Another special feature, we're still on disc one. This is just the first disc, and we're not done yet. Um, the Catastrophe of Success. 
Uh, Stuart Gordon and the Organic Theater. Stuart Gordon talks about his early roots in um, in theater, and um, it's interesting. It's interesting when I meet a ce- when I'm going to meet a celebrity that I care about. I'll actually do some research on that person so that I can find something other than you know what they're most commonly asked about. Um, something off topic for a horror con. Um, so I did, you know, I was fucking really excited to meet Stuart Gordon at a horror hound in Cincinnati. And, um, so I did some research on his past and found out that, uh, you know, so there's interesting stories about his theatrical roots, how he was almost uh, arrested for, or he was arrested for obscenity, like, uh, for a play he did. He was like, he was like, you know, a radical hippie film or, uh, play write or you know maker whatever they do um in chicago i think it was so uh i talked to him about that and uh he seemed relieved and he was very cool and i gave him a fuck remakes pin a monster movie app fuck remakes pin and uh he loved it he put it right on his fucking jacket and he wore it the whole weekend i kept seeing it on his jacket and i was so proud. <laughs> so proud. Theatrical Roots. Catastrophe of Success. Stuart Garden. Also special feature. Still disc one. Keep up, people. Um, theater of Blood. Reanimator. The Musical. <laughs> Lyricist Mark Nutter. <laughs> yeah, there's that on there. Um, deleted scenes, extended scenes, trailers, TV spots, still gallery, and the screenplay, if you have a a Blu-ray ROM on your computer, you can, uh, it's got the entire screenplay on there. That's all just disc one. Unrated version, all of that noise, one disc, pay attention, we're doing disc two now. We're starting now. Disc two, integral version. If you don't know what the integral version is, it's uh, it's basically um, it came out in Europe. It's not authorized. Never has been. Never will be. I don't think. Like so, it came out in Germany originally. Uh, somebody sat down with the unrated version, the R version, and the television version. And and edited that all together into one massive 108 mi- or 105 minute um, extended fucking epic version of um, Reanimator. I've never seen it. Just like anybody else that lives in America, unless you got it on a bootleg. Because guess what? Arrow Video is the first the first people to ever fucking release it here in the U.S. So, uh, not only are you getting to see it for the first time, unless you're a dirty bootlegger, um, but, like, they did a 4K restoration on it, and, um, you know, I watched it. That's the version, I watched both versions, but I watched that one first, because I was fucking curious. Um, interesting. Interesting. For sure. Uh, you know, there's... A weird fucking... The the main differences are between uh, unrated and integral are as the... um, There's a weird, like, subplot going on with uh, Dr. Hill. Dr. Hill's like some kind of a Svengali hypnotist. And uh, he has the power to, like, you know, plant suggestions just talking to people. So, like, he's, he's literally, like, putting, like... Um, Herbert West and and uh, Barbara Crampton and and uh, everybody that he's that he wants to manipulate, he's putting them into a little like uh, hypnosis state, and um, it's different. It's different. There's also uh, there's also uh, a little storyline where fucking Herbert West not only is the uh, you know using the reagent on on the dead, but he's like shooting up a little bit of it himself just to keep him awake and alert um small doses 
and he's you know they they imply that he's a fucking he's addicted to it he's a fucking reagent junkie he's like fucking he gets the shakes and bruce abbott has to go in and fucking inject him because he's like he can't fucking do it himself he's so shaky so uh you know didn't most people haven't seen that unless i guess you got the unrated version but then that you know you got all the gorb added back in um, I'll tell you one problem with it. It's a huge problem. A huge problem. It's two huge problems. One of one huge problem is one of Barbara Crampton's tits, and the other one is her other tit, right and left tits. They are not the full frontal. Where she stands up out of uh, out of bed after banging Bruce Abbott, it's gone. There's no like extended look at Barbara Crampton's tits in the integral version. They should they they keep the camera on Bruce Abbott talking to her, and then they flash back and like she's got her bra on. Holy shit! That's a huge fucking problem. It's a curiosity watching the integral version, but that's a fucking game breaker. Holy crap. For children of the 80s like myself, who grew up on Barbara Crampton's tits, that's a game breaker. Yes, it's a deal breaker. It's a game changer, if you will. Let's, you know, everybody drink up some coffee. We're getting back to it now. Okay, so integral version. It's good for a curiosity. Minus two major issue, two major fucking things. Major. There's two major things missing from the integral version. Right and left. Pay attention. We're moving on. You got the point. So, um... Integral version, first time in the U.S., I already said that. This one only has one audio track, but it's, uh, it's 5.1 DTS HD Master Audio Surround Sound. Yes, it sounds nice, too. It's a good fucking track. Um, new special feature. A guide to Lovecraftian cinema. Chris Lackey, the host of uh, HP Lovecraft... The, uh, the H.P. Lovecraft Literary Podcast. Try to say that fast. Um, he provides... This special feature is actually fucking awesome. And you won't hear me say that very often. Especially about new stuff that they're adding on. But this dude is... Honest. Entertaining. He's got a little bit of personality. But the cool part is is that he starts from the beginning of fucking cinema and starts listing um, movies that were made that were based on H.P. Lovecraft stories or even, like, you know, influenced that by them heavily. So he starts with um, The Haunted Palace with Vincent Price, Edgar Allan Poe, not based on that. It's based on... Um, The fucking Charles Dexter Ward story that I can't think of the title of. Um, it's an awesome. It's my my like my favorite Vincent Price movie. But that's that was the very first adaptation of an H.P. Lovecraft story. He, then he goes on like, but like it's like an hour long. It's fucking great. Um, highly suggest that one. You and like I said, I'm not a special f feature fucking whore. And usually I'm like, you know, I don't want to hear from this fucking dude about his, you know, the sociological fucking meaning of, uh, you know, this fucking movie. This guy's not like that. He's, he's good. Just watch it. It's like an hour, over an hour long. It's fucking great. I think it's over an hour. Hour, a little more. Um, also on disc two. We're still on the integral version. Uh, this is uh, Br Doug Bradley's Spine Chillers. Doug Bradley, and I didn't know until I 
just fucking saw this special feature on here, has a series of uh, audiobooks from classic horror uh, stories. Um, and there's a bunch of them, like multiple volumes. Uh, and they, he brings in like celebrities to read these classic, these cla classic like short stories. Usually, I think they're sh usually short stories. Um, I'm not sure if they all are, but most of them, the volumes of them, are, are short stories, I believe. Um, this one, he has a website. You should check it out. I, I, I did some research. Uh, there's a bunch of them on there, and he has like you know uh, Robert England on there and and other celebrities. But this one in particular is um, Herbert West Reanimator, as read by Jeffrey Fucking Combs. Uh, this is I want to say I don't remember how long it is. I think it's an hour or a little more. I keep saying that, but I I I honestly think that that's what it is. So that's fucking cool. I don't know if that's been on uh, a special feature or not. So that's all the special features, uh, the details of disc one and two. And uh, now we just got the sweet, tender, delicious box, which I'm rubbing my nose on but not smelling. So don't yell. Right off the bat, you look at it. They call it a digipack. I don't believe that's correct. I believe digipacks are like uh, are like the you know like a connected to like cardboard connected to plastic that like folds out and then there's like the plastic disc holder in the middle. Um, this is just a case, a cardboard case with stuff in. It. Oh, this is a digipack. Sorry, sorry. It's a, what their description is a little misleading. This is a digipack inside. There's a digipack inside the cardboard box. But they say that um, this artwork is based on or uh, was newly commissioned by Justin Erickson. Um, I don't like it. I just gave an opinion. Fuck. Okay, so let's move on then. We got the art, the newly commissioned artwork by Justin Erickson. As you can see, it's uh, it's inspired by turn of the century uh, anatomy books. You know, uh, if you've ever seen those, this is the style. They usually have like a cross section cut out, and then there's arrows with like listing everything, all the parts of the body. Um, it, it is inspired by that. Uh, that's his take on it. There's more inside, the same picture. Uh, we got that, which is just straight turn of the century anatomy. Also inspired. They always had the, it's like figure one. I know you can't read that. Fuck you, Facebook, for being backwards. Uh, it says figure one reagent, but that's like straight, straight from anatomy book. Um, so there's that artwork. Did I say Justin Erickson? Can I say it again and again and again and again? So uh, that's it. They call it a digipack. This is the digipack right here. There's more artwork inside, apparently. Uh, there's artwork behind the discs that I'm not going to show you. Because it's not that good. Damn, that's an opinion. Um, so then there's a, there's a collector book. Collector's booklet uh, with new writings and essay by Michael Gingold. Michael Gingold, everybody. He's like, uh, he's the go-to essayist. If that is a word, we'll use it. We'll go with it. He's a, the go-to essayist for all reissues. <laughs> all modern reissues. He, is, he writes an essay for all of them. And they put it all in the little book with, uh, you know, quite frankly, 
people just look at the pictures and then put it back in their fucking thing. I'm just telling the truth. Nobody's nobody's sitting down and reading this. 1%. 1% of people are, are sitting down and reading that. This next thing might be the fucking coolest. Might be the coolest special feature, at least for me. I'm going to show you now. Do you see this? I kind of showed you earlier. You know, artwork. Nothing on the back. Do you know what this is? This is a 92-page reprinting of the uh, 1991, I think it's Adventure? Adventure Comics? Yeah, Adventure Comics. Um, Three-issue miniseries retelling the story of Reanimator. Now, guess what? This is fucking amazing. It's a little, it's all bound together. Whoop, there's issue two. It's got the, the covers. That might be three. That's issue three cover. Um, I, I'm going to show you the other cover. That's issue two cover. Um, just fucking cool. And I own them all. I own all of them. Uh, I I believe I have every, as far as I know, I have every Reanimator comic book that was released, including the the um, the the last series. It was like a four four issue uh, storyline. I have that, and I have the the cover signed by the artist who I cannot think of the name of. The dude that did, uh, he does everything in fucking orange. And he started out, he like got really famous doing the Archie uh, Undead comics. Uh, that was his, his claim to fame. Uh, so, I mean, I don't need this because I have the comics, but a lot of people don't. They're not that fucking hard to, I mean, they're a little hard to find. They're not like at every comic book store. You got to do some digging. And, uh, awesome! You can read the whole thing. It's very faithful to the story, to the movie, and, uh, and just plain tits, everybody. Plain tits. Is that enough? Well, it's not, because guess what? They included four postcard-sized, uh, lobby card reproductions. They have the, uh, the reproduction of the... Original lobby card, art by uh, Justin Erickson on the back, and that's it. They all have the same thing on the back. There's that one. There's that one. There's that one. And that's it, everybody. That's the whole fucking package. Now it's time for my opinion. My favorite part. Yes. Let's get let's get to it. First of all, first bitch. Let's start with the bitches, then we'll say the positives. First bitch. What's with all the fucking reanimator the musical fucking tie-ins in this release? There's they got, like, actors from the fucking play uh, doing the commentary with Stuart Gordon. Uh, who cares what they think about it? It's a separate fucking entity. It's not the same fucking thing. No place on the special features of this movie. <laughs> Go fuck it. I'm not going to fucking watch that anyway because it's a fucking it's a blasphemy to me for, of the original fucking film. So that can eat it. I don't like that at all. There's the commentary, and then they get their own fucking, uh, their own little fucking interview that's way too long. They could have put something cool in there. I would rather have, you know, like, a group of fucking fans sit down and do the commentary with Stuart Gordon than that fucking bullshit. So that's lame. Sorry, Arrow, that's lame. 
They don't go together. Release the musical and then put that 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 crappy special feature on the crappy mu- musical release. If you fucking or if you're following me, they're not they're not the same thing. So that bites. Um, I it may just be me, but I you know like the integral version as far as the uh, the transfer goes, it looks it looks great. It looks really good, but. My eye was catching something, like in certain scenes, there was a haziness, like a soft, softening filter or something that was going on. Um, just a hazy, a haze, like some of the scenes were hazy. Not a huge deal. Not a fucking game changer, not a deal breaker. Gotta stop saying that. It's deal breaker, not game changer. It's not a, it's not a deal breaker. But... I saw something. I saw something. If I didn't point it out, you might not notice. It's not a big deal. Uh, but there was there's something going on with that. Some of the scenes were like from a different stock or something, and they were trying to like smooth them out. It it looked a little it looked a little squirrely to me. So there's that. I can't say it enough. The integral version does not have Barbara Crampton's tits. Is that a complaint against the box set? They didn't even do the integral version. But no tits, no tits, no tits. No Barbara Crampton tits on the integral version. To do with that what you will. I'm clearly upset about it. Next. Not a knock on Arrow. Well, it kind of is. Most, uh, like... 99.9% of the special features on this box set have already been used on other releases. Uh, Like, it's pretty much, like, word for word, the the Millennium uh, DVD two-disc set from Image? I don't want to say. I'm not sure about that. But, like, um, almost all of them are on here. Uh, And there's others from previous releases uh there's already been another uh, blu-ray release of of uh reanimator from uh like fucking warner brothers or somebody um i don't know but they there there's a ton of special features on that one but uh, most of them are not new there's only actually only a, a couple that are new the rest have already been done before so there's not going to be a whole lot of surprises if you're a special features he- fiend. Special features fiend. Um, you're not gonna you're not gonna be like you know. I have to run out and get this just just for the special features. Mm, you probably should just hold tight. Wait till some like some fucking the next the next definitive release comes out on 4K Blu-ray. Just wait for that. It'll be like a, you know a couple weeks. You'll be you'll be good. Um, what else do we have? I don't. I hate the artwork. I don't like it. I know what he's going for. I don't think it's particularly well done. I mean, like the the um, the imitation of like the anatomy book part looks good, but if you look in like if you look in at the art artwork of the characters from the movie it's you know eh. not doing it for me that being said uh there's maybe like two releases ever in the history of reissues that i've preferred the fucking the newly commissioned artwork over the original so i'm a purist i don't like that I usually don't. Uh, so there's that. Now the positive. Let's get right into it. The transfers are beautiful, for the most part. The uh, especially the uh, the unrated version, beautiful. Um, the sound is amazing, and you have lots of fucking tracks to to choose from. Uh, including commentary, <laughs> like tons of, like you go through, like you hit your audio button on your remote, 
And it's like fucking 10 fucking tracks you have to pick from. Um, it's almost too much, but that's not a complaint. Um, so yeah, you got that. Uh, what else? We're on the positive, right? We're not complaining anymore? I forget. Somebody tell me. Yeah, so there's... Uh, the, the, uh, the transfers are beautiful. The audio is beautiful. There is almost... On the com combined, I did the math. I literally sat down and did the math. Almost seven hours of special features on this release. Seven hours. That's a lot. And I do math good. So, holy shit. I mean, that's like... You could spend a fucking work shift just watching the special features. With your lunch break, right? Right? You get an hour lunch, seven hours. It's a work shift full of special features, everybody. Holy fuck. Everybody calm down. It's too exciting. My, my last positive? Well, the other positive is it's got the fucking integral version that I finally got to see, you know, and the first time ever released in the U.S., Unless you're going to the bootleg table at the fucking con and getting the shitty boot overcharged bootleg for fucking 20 bucks or something gay. Um, then you may have seen it. But the rest of us, or if you have a multi-region Blu-ray player, DVD player, and you, sh you shipped out, you, sh you shelled out for that fucking $20 of German shipping to get it, um, the rest of us haven't seen it. And uh, it's worth seeing at least once, even though we're minus the tits. Um, so that's fucking awesome. And uh, a, the, a Guide to Lovecraftian Cinema with uh, the fucking, that lackey character. Don't focus on the way he's dressed. He looks a bit like a freaking dork. But um, he's, he's entertaining. He's entertaining. And that's a great, it's a great new special feature for me. Uh, just... You know, the history of fucking H.P. Lovecraft and cinema alone. You know how, like, how much fucking research you would have to do to sit down and fucking track, like, every single movie from the beginning of fucking cinema that is based on H.P. Lovecraft? He did it all and tells you about it in a fucking hour. It's really fucking cool and interesting. So, uh, that is also positive. So... I always, you know, like, would I upgrade if I owned the fucking um, Warner Brothers? Fuck, who released it? I forget. The last person that released this on Blu-ray, would I fucking upgrade to this? Jesus fucking Christ, yes. Oh, my God. You would have to be stupid not to. It's a beautiful, beautiful fucking thing with a lot of fucking work put into it. Don't let me fucking, my, my minor complaints deter you in any way because, you know, I like to bitch, quite frankly, and, uh, you know, I bitch the small things. There is nothing major wrong with this. So, would I upgrade? Fuck yeah. I found another negative. I'm going to throw it in there. I forgot to say it. These lobby cards are not fucking all that great. The back is nice. It's printed nice, but uh, they did a little. Uh, they did a little uh, kind of mat on the front. It almost is like it would rub off. The ink would rub off this um, if you uh, if you rubbed a little bit on it. <laughs> I don't know. It's not. I mean, like even the. I think even the resolution looks a little off. That's maybe not. I mean, I don't know. They're not super high quality, but you know, who's buying it for the fucking the postcards anyway? Uh, that's my final bitch. I swear. Oh, we got a we got a comment or a question. Chris Can says. I may have to try to get this release. The UK didn't get it on Arrow. Wait, the UK didn't get it on Arrow, but we did get Bride of Reanimator. Yes! Chris! 
you get most of the good stuff. <laughs> because of the American legal system, all of the good movies, most of the good movies are tied up. So, like, if you look, if you did a comparison to the Arrow UK releases, to the American UK releases, you guys get a majority of the awesome stuff. And, you know, we get, like, every once in a while, we get lucky. And we get something good. But uh, it's worth getting if you have a multi-region Blu-ray player. Wait, what region is this? I should say. You know what? You don't even need. It's multi-region. You can play it over there. A, B, and C. Right there. So, yeah. I would pick it up. I would pick it up. Haha, <laughs> definitely. But you get those amazing Scream releases. Scream Factory. Yes, Scream Factory is awesome. So, yeah, wrapping up my review. Thank you, Chris, for the questions. Um... Would I upgrade? Fuck yes. Would I buy it if I didn't own a copy of Reanimator? Fuck yes. It's not a question of should you get it. It's an IQ test. Arrow is sending this out to the world to see who the smart people are. And uh, you can either, you know, you can e accept the challenge and pass and say, yes, I'm a smart person. Or you can not buy it and fail, and they'll, they'll single you out, and eventually the trucks will come and take you away to a special island. Probably Australia. It's a joke for Chris, he knows. That's it, everybody. It's a short review. An hour into it. I'm going to be back on Friday. To show you what I found over the weekend. My weekend of scrounging. And uh, that'll be Friday at 2. I've got more stuff coming up. That I will announce later. Until then. Monster Movie App. At monstermovieapp.com You can install it on your, your iPhone. Or an Android device. Or if you are this dumb person that got fired from Amazon. Uh, you can get one of those. But, uh, yes, I will see you Friday. Thank you, Arrow, for being awesome and releasing this here. And uh, thank you, Chris, for your comments. And I will see you. Until then, get the fuck out of my house.